Ren graciously declines the offer of payment, expressing that it's not necessary. She stresses the importance of valuing life, highlighting it as a fundamental aspect of humanity. Instead, she suggests they all cherish their time together and enjoy each other's company. Then, Ren opens up about her aspirations, mentioning her contemplation of joining the guild in Harula. However, she acknowledges her youth and wonders if Nikoru would consider being her guarantor. Nikoru responds warmly, stating that it's a small gesture considering Ren's contributions. He then inquires about her age, curious about the extent of her youth. Ren steps closer to Nikoru, revealing her age, which surprises him. He had assumed she was older, judging by her demeanor. Additionally, regarding the individuals who fled, Nikoru declares his intention to report them to the guild upon their return to the city, ensuring they are held accountable for their actions. Nikoru then proceeds to ask Ren to come along with her to the guild as a witness for all that happened, and Ren is swift to respond and mentions that it is not at all a problem for her as she is going to the guild to register anyways. Shortly after, the orc's beefsteak gets done, and Ren provides it to Nikoru for him to regain his strength. Meanwhile, the others begin to eat it as well, and find it to be very delicious. Initially, they thought that one is only supposed to put salt on steak, but to think that shoyu would go well with meat never crossed their mind. Meanwhile, Ren believes that she really possesses the skills of a chef. After a while, they begin to eat as much as they can since Ren has prepared six extra portions. Later at night, the young girl thanks Norn and Belle for that day and proceeds to lay down in a tent with them. Moreover, the young girl realizes that close combat is really scary, and so she decides that she will be more careful next time. On the other hand, Nikoru apologizes to Ren for holding them down. Ren confirms to Nikoru that everything is fine and that they are in no hurry, so he should regain his strength first. The very next morning, they are on their way, and in no time they can see the city of Harula, leading them to be excited. Upon reaching the entrance gate, they are asked to show their citizen cards where the name, age, birthplace of the holder and their magic is mentioned. The guard soon begins to check the citizen card and realizes that their criminal records are good to go and that they don't have any, so he allows them to advance. But soon the guard notices the huge wolf and questions them about it. In response, Nikoru quickly assures the guards that the wolves are well-behaved, noting that he's even slept alongside them without any issues. While the guards express that they'll still need to report this to the guild, they allow them to proceed for now. Meanwhile, Ren is brimming with excitement upon entering the bustling city. The sight of food stalls, stores, and various facilities fills her with anticipation. And just taking in the lively atmosphere ignites a sense of thrill within her. At the guildmaster's office, he acknowledges the actions of the two guards, Kinbaru and Jiggy, stating that he understands their perspective, especially with testimonies to support their claims. Additionally, he mentions that these guards have caused problems in the past, adding weight to their current report. However, the guildmaster finds Ren's story of single-handedly defeating all six orcs a bit far-fetched. He suggests that it would have been more believable if they had claimed that the large wolf accompanying them was responsible for dispatching the orcs. In response to that, Ren mentions to pull out the six orcs out of her storage. But soon as she says this, Ren realizes that she almost revealed her secret skill. But Nikoru is quick to cover for Ren, and he soon explains to the guildmaster that Ren possesses a magic bag where she has stored the six orcs she killed. It is now somewhat believable for the guildmaster, as he appears to be astonished by the fact that Ren has such an item where she can keep the six orcs. Fascinating for the guildmaster, he expresses his want of Ren, a powerful adventurer to stay with them as long as possible. Ren is quick to stop him and mentions that she is not an adventurer yet and asks the guildmaster to get her registered as an adventurer. The guildmaster then proceeds to get Ren registered in exchange for the worth of six orcs that she captured. Later, after getting registered, Ren asks Nikoru if he knows of a nearby hotel where Norn, Bell, and the others could stay. Nikoru abruptly asks Ren to come to his house, but Ren realizes that Nikoru is just trying to get her hooked up with his son, so she respectfully declines the offer. Later, 
Nikoru finds a hotel for Ren, and thereupon she decides that she will finally be able to take a bath after seven days. That is exactly what Ren proceeds to do and goes to the bath to clean herself. The bath appears to be a common one, and so she is aware that anyone can walk in at any time. She proceeds to enjoy the cozy bath and soon tries to grab the soap from outside the bath. An unexpected occurs, and two girls make their appearance all of a sudden, making Ren startled, and soon she proceeds to sprint from there. Later, Ren is having lunch. Shortly after, she gets served, and since the place serves nobles and stuff, Ren is very delighted and satisfied by the large portions that she has gotten. Soon, she begins to eat the food, which she finds very delicious, and since she is satisfied with everything the hotel has to offer, Ren decides that she should start working from the day after, so she will be able to pay for the hotel. It is nighttime now, and Ren proceeds to sleep. The very next morning, Ren begins to make her way to the guild, where she meets the receptionist, who advises Ren to choose the quest for gathering herbs, as that is what all the newbie adventurers do. The receptionist then begins to explain about the importance of gathering herbs and how many useful potions they can make with the help of different herbs. Even though this may sound light at first, soon Ren will realize that the receptionist was actually serious. Later, Ren is making her way into the forest where she makes her way to another path after seeing that some people have already begun gathering the herbs. Ren then soon finds a place containing many herbs and begins to gather them one by one and store them in her storage. She then begins to bundle them in her mind inside of her tent. Moreover, to the outside eye, it may seem as if Ren is doing nothing, but she is actually organizing all the herbs that she gathered within her storage. After a while, Ren makes her way back to the guild, where she approaches the receptionist once again. Thereupon, the receptionist advises Ren to be more careful whenever she goes out on her quests, as it can get pretty dangerous for those who don't go out without having much knowledge. The receptionist then proceeds to introduce herself as Selena. Thereafter, Ren decides to turn in 1% of the herbs that she gathered, but soon as he pulls them out from her storage, even 1% is turning out to be a lot, as the entire front desk is now filled with gathered herb. The second day in the life of Ren as an adventurer begins, and she decides to enjoy the dinner for now on that day. Ren is waiting to see what is on the menu that day, and soon after getting served, she notices that she got bread, sausages, salad, and rabbit meat soup, which is the same menu as the day before. Nonetheless, Ren appears to be fine with it, but there appears to be another issue, which is that the knife is very dull. So, Ren proceeds to call for the waitress and asks her to bring her a knife to which the waitress quickly agrees, and in return, Ren thanks her. Ren then begins to show off her knowledge, and in front of the waitress, Ren cuts the bread in two, opens it up, puts some salad in it, along with some sausages, and mentions that the hot dog is done, leaving the waitress surprised. Furthermore, Ren wishes to be served with ketchup and mustard sauce, but she soon realizes that this many demands might grab others' attention towards her, but it all appears to be too late now as everyone is already staring at Ren. Shortly after, Ren decides that she will explore the forest that day, and as soon as she proceeds to eat, she sees that she is served the same thing as the hot dog she made yesterday, but she cannot really blame them for it. Moreover, Ren realizes that in her world, she would have complained about the making of the hot dog, but in this world there appears to be no such thing as sandwiches, so she cannot really blame them for something that they don't even know. After a while, Ren once again makes her way into the forest along with Norn, and soon recalls that her quest for that day is to gather medicinal plants, and so she is deciding to hone her skills in the forest. In addition to that, Ren has noticed that a bunch of rookie adventurers just like her have been following her. So, Ren immediately recalls how sad Selina got when she was discussing the death of a group, and Ren realizes that Selina will be sad once again, and so she decides that she will not take the rookie adventurers into the forest. Meanwhile, the adventurers begin to follow Ren. On the other hand, Ren has decided to search for the medicinal plants without the help of Norn, and in this way she will even be able to use her detection skill. In no time, Ren comes across a tree, and while looking at it, she wonders if they are the camellia that she has been looking for. Turns out that it is, and the herbs on it appear to be strange as well. Ren then decides to take advantage of whatever she can get her hands on, 
and proceeds to analyze the camellia, leading her to discover that she can make camellia oil with it. Ren realizes that she can stop making oil out of orcs when she has vegetable oil. She can use it to make sauces too, and she would be able to make shampoo and body lotion with less MP consumption. Ren then decides that she should collect them and proceeds to gather all of them, since she has done so by hand. It takes her quite some time to do so. Turns out that by the time she has been collecting the camellia, without even her noticing, the rookie adventurers have already left. Moreover, Ren has gotten her hands on the peanuts that weren't even mentioned on the guild's medicinal purchase list, so she proceeds to place them in her storage. Ren believes that the adventurers left because they must have lost track of her. Shortly after, Ren begins her show of cooking camellia oil with Ren. The first step she shows is to take out the camp, then take out the pan, crockery, handkerchief, and other things. Then fry the camellia in a skillet, puree, and boil it, and then bring up the creation magic into the cauldron. Turns out that with all these tools and materials, the oil is extracted with almost no MP consumption. But Ren didn't know if someone was watching her, so she worked hastily to learn another skill under the guise of doing oil extraction. Later, Ren had to queue at the guild reception so that she could return after lunch. The show then ends with Ren's cooking, and soon after turning in the medicinal plants, Ren receives a reward of five small gold coins, which is enough for her to spend several nights at the hotel, because she now even has high-quality vegetable oil. With all that she has done that day, Ren decides that she will continue frying something someday again. Ren calls for the waitress and asks her if she can use the kitchen for a while. The waitress informs Ren that she will have to ask the chef for it, and shortly after, the waitress comes out and reveals to Ren that she is allowed to use the kitchen for a while, but has been asked to not create a mess there to which Ren immediately assures that she won't. The waitress then takes Ren to the kitchen and mentions to her that she can use the bread without any charge whatsoever, but also mentions that each of the eggs will cost one silver coin, and Ren is allowed to use a small amount of flour too if she needs to. Furthermore, the waitress reveals that it's a good thing Ren asked during their break, before they even started preparing for the lunchtime, to which Ren shows her gratitude. Meanwhile, Ren thinks that the eggs are a bit too expensive, and soon she gazes up at the cook from before who just laughs at Ren through his nose. This leads Ren to get irritated after seeing the cook act in such a way, and she even sees hair sticking out from his nose. But soon, Ren calms down and proceeds to wear the apron to begin her cooking session. While Ren is getting ready, the cook notices that she has got all her utensils ready to use already. Soon, Ren proceeds to use cleaning magic, leading the waitress to wonder if Ren is a wizard or something. Ren then decides to take out the orc meat from her storage and decides to disguise it as if she was pulling it out of her bag. Meanwhile, the waitress notices that Ren has a magic bag and realizes that Ren is quite skilled to be of the same level as an adventurer. The waitress then begins to wonder as to who Ren actually is. Meanwhile, Ren decides to make thicker cuts on this occasion on her orc meat and realizes to never miss a muscle cut. She then proceeds to sprinkle the meat with some salt and pepper and dust it in some flour. The next step Ren does is to beat the eggs and prepare the breadcrumbs, oil up the pot, and then turn on the fire. Ren appears to be aware of what she is doing, and her cooking skills appear to be on a real display here. Moreover, Ren proceeds to deep fry at a low temperature to cook it thoroughly inside, and once it is fried, Ren lets it rest for a while and fry again for a second time, so that it gets cooked to a nice golden brown and by doing so, it gets crispier and tender. Ren names the dish as Orc Katsu, which is now completely cooked. All Ren requires now is some shredded cabbage and turn it into a sandwich with the katsu, and in no time, the Orc Katsu sandwich with picked pickles gets done. Ren then shows her gratitude once again for them to let her use their kitchen and proceeds to have a bite out of the sandwich that she just made, which turns out to be extremely delicious. Meanwhile, the waitress constantly stares at Ren while she is eating, which leads Ren to offer her some as well. The waitress confirms if she can have a bite out of it, and in response, Ren comments that it is really difficult for her to eat while the waitress is staring at her. The waitress takes a bite out of the sandwich and immediately falls into another dimension after tasting the best food that she has ever had. 
Ren notices that the waitress is indulging the food and making delicious noises. Ren appears to have preferred some sauce on the sandwich, but since it is actually seasoned, she seems to be okay with it. If anything, Ren is now aware of how the real meat tastes, and in no time, the plates are emptied as the two munch the sandwich. The waitress appears to be laying down on a bunch of chairs while holding her head in disbelief, as that is the first time she has ever tasted anything like that in her life. Soon, the realization hits, and the waitress gets up to introduce herself to Ren as Lily. Lily further reveals that she has been staying in the town due to her older sister, but she immediately begins to feel embarrassed as she just begged a customer to do something for her, and realizes that her sister is going to laugh at her and tell her that she shouldn't be doing such things. Meanwhile, Ren can't wrap her head around the fact that Lily is feeling embarrassed for such a reason, and wonders if she is from a good family. So, Ren requests Lily to not worry about it anymore, since after all she has helped her get permission to use the kitchen. Ren then tells Lily her name, and mentions that she will be staying there for a while, and so Ren hopes to Lily that she will take care of her. Drool, dripping down from her mouth, Lily mentions that she understands, and meanwhile, Ren realizes that Lily is really an easy girl to get to, but since she is sweet and honest, it doesn't appear to be a problem for Lily. Moreover, Ren realizes that Lily was able to satisfy her desires without standing out, and realizes that this is the way to cook in another world. Later at dinner time, Ren is served with breaded orc meat cooked with oil, and upon taking a first look at it, Ren realizes that the cook tried to copy her once again. Furthermore, the bread appears to be soaked in the oil so it's not even crunchy anymore. On top of that, the cabbage happens to be soggy too, and the batter feels icky as well. Meanwhile, the others appear to be enjoying their food, and she hears various people commenting stuff like, delicious or that the food is simply amazing and adds that it is what is expected from a first-class hotel. Ren realizes that for the people who have never tried a sandwich before, it seems to be quite popular among them, and moreover the cook even comes out of the kitchen to bow to them. Seeing that the others are actually fine with the food, Ren decides that it is not a problem for her as well. Meanwhile, Lily makes her way to Ren and mentions that their cook was determined to make the sandwich and refused to listen to any of them. And soon as Lily proceeds to explain, Ren stops her and mentions that it is fine. Ren adds that she was the one who borrowed the cook's kitchen, and so she is not really in a position to complain about the cook copying her food. Ren also emphasizes over the fact that the final product came out very different from the original one that she made, so she asks Lily to not worry about it anymore. Ren does ask Lily if she can feel the difference between the sandwich that she made and the sandwich that the cook made. In response, Lily assures Ren with a smile on her face that the difference is clear as day. Meanwhile, Ren finds Lily's smile to be quite soothing and then proceeds to thank her for the meal. Ren then once again requests Lily to let her borrow the kitchen once again and reveals that this time, she will be making something even better and in secret. Hearing this, Lily immediately begins to daydream with a drool coming out of her mouth and it explains that she will have no issues with accepting Ren's request. This leads Ren to realize that she has flipped some sort of switch in Lily. Ren makes her way to the weapons dealer that Selena told her about, and thereupon, Ren is looking to buy something that would be more lethal than a piece of gravel being shot using air barrel at the same distance. So Ren buys herself a set of throwing daggers. She then makes her way to the marketplace wondering what they have there. Thereupon, Ren notices Nikuru there, and begins to think what he is doing there, since she thought that Nikuru used to sell his stuff in the commercial area and she even asks him about it. In response, Nikoru reveals that even though he does have his store, he still comes here from time to time to sell, and soon Ren realizes that Nikoru is quite a diligent merchant. Ren then proceeds to buy the necessary ingredients from Nikoru, and sees that he has some of the highest quality products. After being done from buying each of the necessary ingredients, Nikoru soon mentions about his eldest son to Ren, and she immediately leaves from there. After going at a distance, Ren breathes the air of relief after realizing that she was almost forced to become a bride. Ren appears to be running low on cash now, and realizes that it is now time to get some work done. So, she pulls out the medicinal herb gathering list, and in the very next scene, makes her way into the forest. This time, the rookie adventurers appear to be following her again, and this time, 
they are in great numbers as well. Ren then decides to ignore them just like the last time and begins gathering the herbs. Soon, she comes across a young girl gathering the wrong plants, and so Ren warns the young girl that it is not the medicinal herbs that she is gathering, for which the young girl thanks Ren. Furthermore, Ren notices more of them making mistakes, which leads her to become agitated, and soon she screams and mentions that they must not go any deeper into the forest. Ren realizes that she won't be able to sleep if she becomes the cause of death of a child, and soon she proceeds to make her way somewhere else, while mentioning that she has some other matters to attend to. Shortly after, a young boy named Shin makes his way to Ren along with his sister, the young girl whom Ren looked out for a while ago, and Shin thanks Ren for doing so. Shin then apologizes to Ren for following her around, and soon she mentions that she is going to do something now and asks Shin to do the same. Ren then proceeds to take off her leggings and begins to stomp over the flour dough that she just made using salt and water. Ren doesn't have any dried bonito or kelp, and she has been using a chicken broth as a substitute for a chicken-type monster. Stepping on the udon dough causes the gluten to expand and become firm. She has never tried doing this in the open before, and thus it puts her in such a good mood that she can't help but hum a tune. Meanwhile, Shin is surprised to see such a skillful show in front of him from Ren. Later, while waiting for the dough, Ren decides to have rabbit meat with garlic roast as lunch that Lily packed for her earlier. Ren then proceeds to stretch out the dough, cut it in pieces, and soon gets done with preparing all of the ingredients. She then makes her way back to the guild, and this time she was able to rake in ten small gold coins at the guild. Ren then asks Lily if she can borrow the kitchen once again to which Lily agrees in no time. After making her way in the kitchen, Ren notices the cook closely analyzing her so he can copy her recipe once again. Ren appears to be calm this time as she has prepared most of the ingredients outside. She then begins to fill one of the pots with water and heats it until the water boils and then pours the broth in another pot. Ren then cuts the garnishes and adds them to the soup and lets it simmer for a bit. She then adds salt and soy sauce for flavor, and when the water reaches its boiling point, she adds the udon. Ren then rinses it with water and then transfers it into a bowl and then begins to add the soup and just the right amount of ingredients. This gives Ren a fully cooked clear chicken broth udon. Ren has made a portion for Lily as well, and upon eating it, she once again loses her mind. Later, Ren once again makes her way into the forest to gather the medicinal herbs and the rookie adventurers are following her this time as well. Ren then grabs some of the herbs and begins to make her way back when suddenly an ogre comes out. Ren uses her air barrel and with the help of Norn, she defeats the ogre while saving the young girl once again. After a while, Ren makes her way back to the guild where she comes across Selina, Lily's sister, and there she discovers the reason for why Selina is staying there to work. Ren believes that these two sisters can get her into Yuri, and soon Selina agrees on sending a letter to the hotel through the guild. Soon, Selin reveals to Ren that she is aware of how she is taking care of Lily nowadays, and soon Ren proceeds to make Selina taste her food. Upon eating it, Selina begins making an erotic face, leading Ren to feel fulfilled and satisfied. Soon, the guildmaster makes his arrival and sees the two enjoying the food. He then reveals to Ren about what he heard and mentions that her name is being taken for the one who killed the ogre. So, the guildmaster asks Ren to fill him in on the details. The guildmaster asks Ren to relax and mentions that she is not going to get punished for what she did, but rather mentions that he is there to thank her for taking care of that ogre on her own accord. The guildmaster proceeds to reveal to Ren and explains that she is not allowed to take subjugation quests, but since she was attacked, she will not be punished for this case. He then asks Ren as to why she is not considering selling the materials that she got. Ren does not seem to be aware that she can sell the stuff that she got without getting punished. Ren immediately decides that she will be selling her stuff and she gets 20 gold coins in return for them. This seems to have solved Ren's money problems and so she decides to go to Nikoru's store and buy some more food. Meanwhile, the buyer appears to have no clue how Ren got all that stuff there, 
but he is not willing to ask any questions as he is happy and content with whatever he is getting. The guildmaster then temporarily decides to close the southern forest, so Ren decides to spend her time in the river collecting stuff. Ever since the ogre incident, the kids have been treating Ren like their boss, and everyone has been quiet. This means that no more selfish kids for Ren, which might be a good thing or a bad thing, but only time will tell. Since Ren is craving for some wish, she proceeds to craft some fishing wear and proceeds to fish in the river. The kids appear to be watching Ren, and so she decides to take out the guts using her hands and eat the fish. So she proceeds to place the fish on the stove, sprinkle it with some salt and grill it. Then she decides to garnish it using salt, and she finally gets grilled char with salt. Ren then takes a bite out of the fish, and she immediately recalls how she has been enjoying all of the oily food that she has been eating lately, and this grilled char just feels refreshing on her stomach. Soon, the kids wish to eat the fish as well, and Ren asks them to go and catch the fish by themselves. Thereupon, Shin begins to tell his story to Ren, and mentions that his father was a merchant, and that they have been living a poor life in a group. Shin then continues and mentions that ever since Ren has come into their life, their income has gone up, and for that Shin is unable to thank Ren enough for all that she has done. Feeling pity for them and understanding their struggle, Ren agrees to prepare a dish for the kids and asks them to gather some potatoes. To get rid of the poison from the potatoes, Ren explains that they shouldn't eat the buds, as they are the one that's poisonous and not the rest of the plant. She then proceeds to gouge out the buds and then cuts off a thick layer out of the whole thing. Then she boils them in salted water, and soon the potatoes are ready. Ren then adds some butter on top of the potatoes and proceeds to serve it to the kids. Immediately upon smelling them, the kids begin to have a feeling of how the potatoes will be tasting, and as soon as they take a bite out of it, they are left in complete and utter feeling of delightfulness as they have never had such tasty potatoes. But that is because it's made from additive-free butter that Ren bought at the market and salted it using creation magic to make it high quality. Ren had so much fun earing with kids that before she knew it, it ended up getting late. Later, Ren ended up in line to buy something, so she got bored and proceeded to make her way back to the guild. There, Ren overhears a couple of adventurers having a discussion when soon one of the adventurers mentions to the other about the newcomer. The adventurer begins to mention that the newcomer is a tamer and she has got two big wolves with her and that they seem to be greater wolves. Meanwhile, Ren is busy at the reception, when soon an adventurer notices that Ren matches all the descriptions of the newcomer, and as soon as he turns her around, Ren recognizes the adventurer as Neil. Neil is Coco's brother, a girl whom Ren saved when she was living in the woods. Ren recalls that Coco has a nice personality, but she is not so sure about her brother, Neil. Neil and Ren then engage in a discussion regarding their pasts and how Ren disappeared all of a sudden and shortly after having a brief discussion, Ren makes an attempt to escape. She then makes her way to the inn to sleep and hopes that things will get better by the next morning. Later, during her adventure, Neil and his party members appear to be following Ren. Soon, one of Neil's party members introduces herself as Kali and mentions that she will be escorting her that day. Then, Thess introduces herself to Ren as Neil's lover and soon another party member, Beck introduces himself and they all appear to be escorting Ren that day. Beck soon explains that it is not possible for them to escort Ren without a formal request, and Ren seems to realize that Beck is the only one with common sense among them. Furthermore, Beck also happens to be the only C-rank member in the party, and meanwhile, Neil is sneaking a peek on Ren when she is trying to gather herbs. Ren appears to be sure that Neil is fantasizing about something. Meanwhile, Neil's point of view is shown where he is thinking that he must protect Ren at all costs. On the other hand, Thess is wanting to kill Ren if given the opportunity. Later, Ren proceeds to register a complaint regarding Neil and his group members to Selena, and she assures Selena that she will make sure her complaint reaches the Guildmaster. Ren then gets asked to have lunch with Neil and his group, which she abruptly refuses, and soon a quarrel begins among the people. Ren realizes that this place is a hell and soon decides that she should go to the sea. After reporting that stalking prick Neil, Ren finally went back to her days of peace. But that cook still is still throwing glares at Ren, 
and Neil is still being a pain. It was bad enough that Ren had to stand out right in front of the guild, and it is said that rumors about people don't last longer than nine days. Ren is looking to seek refuge somewhere until this all dies down. Ren appears to have heard at the guild that there is a seaside village towards the south, and Ren believes that it will be a change of scenery inside a seaside village. Eating delicious seafood, lazing around, and Ren also wants to stock up more seafood. Because the only thing they get in town is processed stuff, and since fresh fish is hard to come by, Ren has made up her mind to leave Harula and head to the seaside village to the south. Ren tells Lily about her plans and she begins to cry, and she even stops by the guild on her way out of town, and soon she discovers that she has been promoted to E-rank adventurer after contributing a lot for the guild. The only ones left were the kids, and while bidding farewell to them, Ren hands them over some potions and asks them to either use them when the time comes or sell them if they need the money. And so, following her heart, Ren makes her way to the seaside village, and she was very excited to reach the south area. But now that she thinks about it, she is very frustrated that she isn't able to do her routine at Harula. So instead, Ren has been doing her routine at a nearby forest. Moreover, she spends three entire weeks on her routine, and even gets some maple syrup for herself during this time. Afterwards, Ren also ended up rescuing a merchant who got attacked by goblins along the road with her sniping skills. As a token of his gratitude, the merchant offered to give Ren a ride in a carriage to the village, as she saved his life after all. Finally, Ren arrives at the sea, but is soon hit with the hard truth that it is not the right time of the season for the sea. Roberto, the merchant, then reveals to Rent that his house is also an inn, and Ren decides to reside there for a while. There, she receives a bowl of miso soup to drink, and soon realizes that it's made with broth. Ren then asks for some kelp to make that broth. The very next day, they show Ren the market where she buys all of their bonito flakes and kelp that they had in the inn. It's basically a small market which is meant just for that village, and soon Ren goes on a shopping spree and buys a lot of ingredients. Furthermore, during daytime, Ren spends her time using creation magic on the beach to endlessly produce salt, and then she quickly puts them in her storage. Since then, Ren has been staying in the southern village, and Ren has been buying every single thing in the market for a few days now. Ren feels like she is starting to get treated like some sort of noble. Lately, Ren has been buying a lot of stuff, and the economy is only as good as the people who run it. A few days go on like this, and after going on a shopping spree, Ren decides to finally leave the village. Roberto gives Ren a ride halfway before they had to part ways. Shortly after, Ren begins to walk and she can see the city of Harula. Suddenly, she comes across a couple of adventurers who are running for their lives. In no time, an ogre comes out from the bushes, and Ren immediately gets to action. She efficiently uses Air Barrel to eliminate the ogre, and the two adventurers are quick to thank Ren for her help. One of the adventurers then reveals to Ren that the Guildmaster made two groups of C-rank adventurers and five groups of D-rank adventurers to fight off the 20 ogres that had been spotted. They managed to find only three, but soon came across an ogre lord who led them to a pack of ogres. Ogre Lord is the higher form of ogre who is not only the ogre, but takes the herd, which is led by a ruler class, and the herd will have a higher level of individuals, such as a high-level commander. Ren then inquires to the adventurers regarding where that ogre lord came from. In response, the adventurer mentions that it came from the western forest, and Ren immediately realizes that it is the place where she just came from. All of a sudden, Norn begins to growl in a fearsome manner, making the adventurers anxious, which leads them to ask Ren to control her companions. Thereupon, Ren begins to wonder why Norn and Bell are looking fearsome, and soon realizes that the Ogre Lord was the one who hurt Norn when she first met him. So, Ren decides that she will help Norn take his revenge with full interest, and she decides to get serious about it. The saying by Carnegie goes something like, Understanding and development make an apple as valuable as a gold coin. These are the records of a researcher's insatiable quest. Rewind back to when Ren first left Harula when she happened to stumble upon a small forest that one couldn't see the back of from the road. 
Ren thought that this place would be a great spot to set up her house at, so she took out her old room from her storage. Ren proceeds to place the house, and as soon as she passes the door, she goes about her daily routine. One might wonder as to what Ren is doing, but why is it none other than her daily routine? A daily routine that Ren hasn't done ever since arriving at Harula, and so that is the dictionary definition. But it almost had lost its original meaning to Ren Ren thinks and decides to keep going for a few more rounds of her daily routine and realizes that it will be a new record. Ren believes it to be a routine with no negative effects at all, and soon she decides to have another Schlick Olympics. Three days of Ren's daily routine finish, and one will probably be thinking that Ren has been doing nothing other than her daily routine for the past three days, and one might even have started having bad thoughts concerning Ren. That appears to be not all that Ren has been doing. As a matter of fact, there are plenty of maple trees in the forest, and when Ren did further research and investigation, they turned out to be sugar maples. That could only mean one thing, and that is maple syrup with sugar and sweets. In order to get the sap, Ren proceeds to make a hole in the maple tree and inserts a tube through the hole. She then lets the time pass for the sap to drip little by little until it fills the container. The next step is to boil the accumulated sap and the finishing touches can be instantly applied using creation magic and soon the maple syrup is completed. Ren could make pancakes with this and she will be super happy. This was quite the meaningful use of her time. Shortly after, Ren's lifestyle magic reaches level 10, finally. Plus, she has got a new skill that she can use, which is birth control. Ren understands that it will be hard for men to understand this, but aside from the obvious fact, she can use it to refrain from the effects of menstruation. As a person with severe symptoms, it's quite significant for someone like Ren, so she doesn't even have to spend any more time stuck in the bed every month. Moreover, Ren realizes that she has got another skill that she could do business with, and aside from that, there's another reason as to why she holed up there, as she wanted to conduct some research on golems. It seems like golems work on already set basic behavioral standards based on the magic stones collected from the monsters. Ren then makes her own two golems, wood golem named Kun and clay golem named Kun. Ren gave them joints and other parts wherever needed. And in the middle of that, Ren suddenly got the magic operation and magic perception skill. Magic perception is a skill that lets one to sense magic, and on the other hand, magic operation skill is a more efficient way of using magic. They both have its uses and can cover for some of the shortcomings of creation magic. It seems like the golems can only do simple, repetitive motions. And because of that, it seems like Ren won't be able to use golems to support her in combat and such. Furthermore, Ren decides that she should try and make a golem that one could give orders to. Ren plans that this golem will have a magic stone acting as a sort of antenna, and the thoughts of the user will be sent and received through magic, and the commands will be written in real time. This way, it will be easier for Ren to lead them into the battle as they will work with her intentions. It could even scratch an itch, and if Ren can somehow manage to attach a soft stick-like object to golem's crotch, it could even turn out to be quite the support item in the history of daily routines. Three weeks later, after the golem's creation, Ren realizes that her plan was really bad. It's not like she just indulged herself in pleasure as she did get something out of it. Ren appears to have learned skills like golem creation, golem control, and automata creation. Ren wonders what kind of play she could have, but soon realizes that this is a good sign as well which means that if an enemy were to show up, Ren would be fine. Some Ren decides to just go ahead and build more to see how many she can control at one time, and moreover, she decides to test them using her body. It was said that the forest was filled with voices and sounds that should not be made in an urban area. Ren uses the skill of Hawkeye and spots a pack of ogres and even spots a red ogre, an ogre lord. The ogres appear to be getting close to Harula, and Ren realizes that she should do something about it. While the Guildmaster is fighting off these ogres efficiently, Norn rushes in on the battlefield, and seeing a large wolf hurling to their way, the soldiers start getting worried, but is soon asked by the Guildmaster to calm down after he realizes that Norn is sent by the misses. What's more is that Norn has a letter attached to him, and soon the Guildmaster takes it out to read it. 
the letter has mentioned how Ren is aware of the fact that the Guildmaster is currently engaged with a group of ogres around the road and she has asked the Guildmaster to agree with the conditions mentioned so she can cooperate with him. Furthermore, the letter has mentioned that as soon as Norn's howling will be heard, Ren will start sniping, leaving the Guildmaster from where exactly Ren will be sniping. Meanwhile, the Guildmaster is of the thought that things seem as they are right now, the ogres are going to end up pushing them back all the way to Harula, and realizes that if Ren is to join them, then she will be quite an asset, and the Guildmaster definitely don't want to bring another battle back to the town. On the other hand, Beck has also offered the Guildmaster to pull out his demon sword. And while his offer is intriguing, the Guildmaster decides to take up on the offer of Ren, realizing that even if things go southways, then it will be only a matter of punishment. The Guildmaster then asks Norn to signal to her master, Ren, and soon when he does so, Ren proceeds to get prepared for her attack. After analyzing the situation, Ren calculates that there are 16 ogres in total, and also realizes that she cannot take them out all at once. She then wonders if she should thin them out first, and soon she sets up her rifling barrel and throwing daggers. This appears to be a strategy called a blade dance, and in no time, the effects can be seen as the ogre's numbers start dwindling. The soldiers on the ground realize that this is the perfect opportunity for them to charge at the ogre group, and in no time, Beck orders the soldiers to advance forward. Suddenly, shots start striking the ogres from afar, leaving them to wonder where they are coming from, but they decide not to care and focus on taking down the group of ogres. Meanwhile, Norn directly goes over to the ogre lord to fight with him, but Ren soon realizes that Norn's attacks are doing nothing to the ogre lord. So, Ren ups the ante and increases the speed to 1000 m per s and 70 mana consumption, and realizes that she will need to use the Hawkeye at the same time. Ren realizes that this will be her last shot so she has to gamble on it, and that is exactly how Ren finally succeeds in her plan and manages to defeat all the ogres with her smartly crafted strategy. She then makes her way to the battlefield where she exchanges greetings with the Guildmaster and soon inquires to him if he is alright. In response, the Guildmaster assures that he is fine and emphasizes that he wouldn't be if she didn't help them, and soon mentions that it's a miracle that they didn't face a casualty while facing an enemy like that. The Guildmaster then gets all praise for Ren, and even though she believes that she would have died if she was to fight the same way the soldiers were, but the Guildmaster is quick to comment and mentions that she is a master of her own way of fighting. He even shows his impressiveness on her pinpoint accuracy, and moreover gives her knives back, so that no proof of her involvement will be left there. What's more, is that Ren has asked the Guildmaster to give her the reward in cash, and to let her keep the materials to which the Guildmaster quickly agrees, with no objection whatsoever. The Guildmaster then mentions that they are running short on manpower in Harula, and offers Ren to be a part of her guild officially to stand out. But Ren nods and refuses respectfully, as she is not a fan of being in the spotlight. So, Ren makes sure to take a guarantee from the Guildmaster that she will not be taking part in any activity that will put her in the spotlight. While making her way back, Ren mentions to Norn that they did a really good job, but soon passes out while mentioning that she is running out of MP. Ren introduces herself and mentions that she is currently on her way back after defeating the Ogre Lord. But she has now run out of MP, so she's taking a break. It appears that Ren has finally made her way at the front entrance of Harula, and people who look like members of the Ogre Slaying Squad, Guild employees and Ogre Corpse Porters have been constantly passing by that day. Ren thinks that it'd be helpful to have the Guildmaster keep her presence a secret. Meanwhile, some of the adventurers there started offering gold coins in return for an intimate night to Ren, when suddenly Norn gets up and begins to growl at them, but is soon calmed down by Ren. They realize that the wolf is the one who defeated the ogre, and so they are quick to leave the place. Shortly after, the two adventurers whom Ren saved earlier arrive and tell Ren that if she needs anything, she can always just let them know and they will try to help her out as much as they are able to. Meanwhile, Ren believes that she might need a bit of help in the city. Suddenly, Neil makes his arrival as well, while inquiring to Ren about what happened and where she has been for the past month. In response, Ren expresses her wonder as to why Neil keeps popping up at times like these. Soon, Neil offers his help to Ren, 
as he is a certified ogre slayer as well. But Ren respectfully declines his offer. Thereupon, Thess realizes that Neil is being too close to Ren, so she proceeds to drag him out of there. After a while, Ren finally reaches Harula after leaving it a month ago. There appears to be not much going in the city aside from the rampant ogre activity. For the meantime, Ren has finally arrived at the inn that she previously stayed in. She may not be fond of the cook, but there's no other place in town that lets her stay with Norn. Coincidentally, Ren sees a man getting declined after the inn receptionist telling him that they don't have any rooms left. And in response, the man begins to express his disappointment over missing out on the so-called food of rumors. This appears to be news for Ren as well, and moreover she is wondering what this food of rumor is. Soon, Ren makes her way to Lily, who is delighted to see Ren return back. Ren then inquires to Lily about the many customers that they are having to, which Lily explains to Ren that it's all because of her. Ren mentions that since they do not have any more rooms left, she will be looking for another place. But Lily soon stops her and explains that the owner has reserved a room for her already, as he will be always welcoming Ren to come by whenever she wants. It is dinner time now and Ren is having her dinner while being delighted to see that the others are enjoying their food as well thanks to the food that she made earlier. Soon, Ren notices that Lily now has a colleague with her and her name is Elisa. Ren then asks Elisa about Lily's whereabouts and Elisa is quick to mention about Lily's busy schedule due to a lot of customers. Ren then offers for Lily to have dinner in her room and Elisa asks to come along to which Lily agrees. The two then arrive at Ren's room 30 minutes later, and soon Ren begins to prepare a special dish for them to eat. Immediately upon tasting them, the two lose their mind and go into another dimension. Meanwhile, Lily appears to have a smirk on her face as she realizes that she has succeeded in making another lady feel the delight from her cooking. The following day, Lily goes back to the Adventurer's Guild, where she encounters the same adventurer who was trying to pick her up the day before. Turns out, the adventurer has come to make Ren pay for her behavior with them, and soon the adventurer begins to loudly mention about Ren having a wolf, when suddenly the guildmaster makes his arrival asking the adventurer as to what he is doing. In response, the adventurer mentions that he was asking Ren about something that happened the day before, while the guildmaster proceeds to grab the adventurer by the collar and reminds him about the pledge. Furthermore, the guildmaster also reminds the adventurer about the consequences of breaking that pledge, and in no time, the guildmaster seems to have humbled the adventurer who then soon leaves. The guildmaster then proceeds to hand over the rewards to Ren for helping him defeat the ogres and the ogre lord. The reward is a sack consisting of 500 gold coins which Ren finds unbelievable. The guildmaster conveys that just for the ogre lord alone, she should have been rewarded 2,000 gold coins. Ren then proceeds to accept the reward. In a later scene, Ren invites Lily, Selina, and the Guildmaster to lunch at her room. In preparation for that, Ren makes richly flavored shrimp soup, stir-fried shrimp in chili sauce with rice. Soon, after finishing these dishes, the three are completely full and at their maximum capacity when suddenly Ren reveals her dessert, which is a berry gelatin. Ren comments that since they are already full, she will save it for now, but the three could not help but devour it as well due to the beautiful smell that they were getting from the dessert. In no time, they finished it completely as well, and towards the end, everyone ended up looking like sea lions that were beached. In other words, this appears to be a victory for Ren. All three of them are too full to be of any use for Ren. Later, Ren is seen reading a book in the library about golem-related skills. The book mentions that creating a golem originally required knowledge from alchemy and skill, but it doesn't explain how to learn these skills. Ren has always known that when using creation magic, similar skills are learned, making it difficult to acquire specific prerequisite skills like these. This inconvenience becomes apparent in creation magic. The next skill mentioned in the book is body control, which is a higher level of physical maintenance and skill. During a lesson, Ren learns this skill, realizing she's been doing exercises similar to it for the past 30 minutes. Finally, Ren finds skills in the book that enhance physical abilities, such as magic and eagle eyes. However, these skills consume HP while in use, making them very efficient. 
Ren isn't too worried about her current state. She realizes that it's a dream for many to use their fighting spirit to perform techniques like those in manga. Additionally, Ren has heard that each of the seven magical powers and fighting spirits have skills that compensate for their low fuel efficiency. This is all what Ren reads for that day, and soon she recalls that she is someone who likes to complete game trophies, so she decides that she has to touch every skill. Ren is aware that she has read a lot, but it is not even evening yet, and so she decides to head home to get some groceries while she is at it. Ren then makes her way to Mr. Ren, a merchant, proceeds to buy flour, Lloyd's rice and flour. Mr. Ren then mentions to Ren that he hasn't seen her for some time lately and asks if she has been somewhere to which Ren reveals that she has been to the South Village. Mr. Ren then immediately expresses his wish to have gone with Ren to the South Village, but Ren is thinking that she wouldn't have been able to do her routine then. Shortly after, Mr. Ren pulls out the flower to give it to Ren, when suddenly she notices that it is buckwheat flour. Mr. Ren confirms that it is indeed buckwheat flour and mentions to Rent that she should knead it in water, bake it, and then eat it. Rent then proceeds to get some flour when soon she notices that Mr. Ren also has galette eggs. Immediately, Ren asks how she can buy eggs and milk and reveals that she would like to make some sweets. However, Mr. Ren does not appear to carry it, but he does mention to Ren that he can buy it and sell it to her. He further mentions that there is a minimum price for the sale of the product, so he cannot offer it too cheaply. Meanwhile, Ren realizes that poultry farming itself is practiced in several villages around King's Landing. Moreover, near that city there's only one village beyond the northeastern river between it and the capital. But if one is not a member of the Merchant's Guild, it might be a little difficult. There also appears to be the matter of how long it will take to transport if they have to carry it here from near King's Landing, they will let it rot in the meantime. For the milk problem, Mr. Wren suggests that they should have goat milk as a substitute, but since Wren is not a fan of goat's milk, Mr. Wren comments that they will have to get closer to King's Landing. Thereupon, Mr. Wren remembers that in King's Landing, they raised cattle in a northern village and soon mentions that they would occasionally come here to sell when there was a surplus for consumption in the village. Ren now knows what her next goal is. Suddenly, Mr. Ren mentions that he'd like her to meet his eldest son, and Ren quickly leaves. She realizes that if she's going on an expedition, she'll need an assistant. That's how it was in the village down south, and she understands she can't keep driving Norn alone. <laughs>